everyone, welcome to episode number 52 of the Bill Podcast and in this episode we'll be going through Tmux or rather Terminal Multiplexer. Let's briefly look at some of the relevant websites related to Tmux. Firstly, it is the Tmux homepage where we can go ahead and download and build Tmux. It also has the manual page, a few FAQs as well as the open source code. There is also a very fine document under the Arch Linux and Tmux. This page will also give us some brief notes on how to use them. I also really, really benefited from this book called Tmux, Productive Mouse-Free Development by Brian Hogan. And I definitely recommend to read this book as well. And finally, we will also use this gem called Tmuxinator, which will allow us to create very complex uh, Tmux sessions easily. So with these four websites readily available, let's get started with Tmux. So firstly, in order to install Tmux, you can either build it or you can also use some kind of package manager to install it. You can either use Mac ports or Homebrew or for Linux systems, you can also use apt-get and so on and so forth. Now I have already done the installation of Tmux. So if you have already done so, you can go ahead and query Tmux with a capital V as an option. And this should give you the current version of Tmux if you have already installed it properly. As usual, I also find it very handy to kind of know the path where Tmux is fired from. And lastly, definitely the manual page of Tmux, which will come in really, really handy. So go through this manual page. All right. So before we go on and explore some of the features of Tmux, let's understand what is one key benefit of using Tmux. So for this, we will very simply load up a web server. And we will use Node.js for this. Of course, for your purpose, you can create anything such as with Apache or Nginx and so on and so forth. So basically, I'll go to the Node.js website and copy this entire Hello World project. And I will open up this file called server.js. And here I will basically copy and paste the entire code. Now, if we go to our terminal or rather command line, and if we do node and then server.js, Guess what? We will have a very simple server running at this URL. Why don't we go ahead and visit it? There you go. It is running all right. But what happens when you go ahead and quit your command line? So let me go ahead and quit it. And yes, we will come back to the browser and let's try to refresh it. Well, obviously it could not found this URL because node server has terminated. Let me open up my command line, in this case, my iTerm this time. And this time I will press a Tmux to go into a Tmux session. Now, if you see here right at the bottom, if you have entered into Tmux, it will give us this sort of status bar right at the bottom. So over here, why don't we run a node and then server JS, very similar to what we did previously. All right, it's running. So why don't I go back to the browser and refresh it? Yep, it is running. And this time I'll go back to the terminal and quit it once again. And this brings me back to the browser. Let me refresh it. Guess what? It is still running. And now let me go ahead and open up a brand new command line once again. And here, if you go on and do tmux ls, which means to list out all the sessions, guess what? There you go. I have one Windows running. So that is basically the benefit of using Tmux. Now, this is just a very simple case of visiting a local host here using our local machine. You might have to SSH into a remote computer. And this is where Tmux comes in really handy. Let's say for some reason your connection gets lost, whatever you're doing will still keep running. For the sake of simplicity, I'll go ahead and kill all the server and start afresh. So now if I do tmux list all the servers, guess what? It is failing. So let's start a brand new and understand what are sessions. So in order to create a brand new tmux session, we can do tmux new and then dash s and then the session name. For our case, why don't we just give the session name as monitor to basically let us monitor some stuff. So if you come down to the status bar right at the bottom, so the very first thing you see here by default is the name of the session. Next, you will see zero 
And this basically indicates the number of window or rather the index of window. And beside that will be the name of the window or rather the process name running currently. Once you have entered this session, you can also easily exit it by doing exit and you come back to the main command line. So let's go back and fire up a new session called monitor this time. And why don't we do a very simple ping.google.com. So let's say for some reason you are exiting this once again. So how do you exactly go back to the same session? In this case, let's list all the sessions. So there you go. You have monitor and it is running one window. How do you go back to this process? So in this case, we'll do T marks and then attach dash T for the target and then the session name for us it is simply monitor and there you go you will go back right to the place where we were starting ping google.com of course you can stop the ping once again and then you can also exit it to come back to the command line so this was a brief introduction to something called sessions let's go inside something called windows so for this case we will once again do tmux and then new dash s session name in this case monitor and let's also start a new window why don't we call it top to kind of run the top command great so we are inside a new session called monitor and a new window if you want to create a, another new window inside this session in order to invoke it you'll have to do control b lift up and then simply c notice here right at the bottom you will see there is zero and then the path name of the command line and then one and then the path name the asterisk beside the name will basically show you the current chosen window why don't we similarly run ping google.com right here? So notice here immediately the name will change to the command name. So let's explore some features. How do we also go ahead and rename this current window? So in order to do that, we'll do control B, lift up and then comma. So notice here the status bar right at the bottom will change. And this is how we can go ahead and kind of rename it. Why don't we just say Google? And there you go, your window number one or rather index one gets renamed to Google. How do we go back to the window which has an index zero here? Well, for this, there are a few ways. Before we do that, why don't we go ahead and create another window? So for this, we'll do control B, lift up and then C once again. Notice here, another index two will appear. So here, why don't we create something called top? which will basically give us the various processes running in our computer. And notice here how the name at the bottom will also change. We can also go ahead and rename it. Similarly, control B, lift and then comma. Let's name it as processes. Finally, why don't we create a final window, control B and then C. And this time we will simply do a node server.js. So how do we toggle through all these four windows. There are a few ways to do it. So if you do control B N, it will basically go to the next one in the increasing order of the index. Just notice how the asterisk travels from 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. Notice it once again. So control B N, control B N, control B N, control B N. If you want to cycle it in the reverse order, you have to do control B and P for previous. So notice it will go from two to one, zero, and then three. So control B P and control B P. So the asterisks are changing. You can also directly call the index number window. So let's say right now you are in index two window. You want to go to zero. So for this, you can simply do control B and then zero. Notice here it will immediately come back to the desktop. Finally, let's say you have too many windows to choose from. In this case, you can evoke a menu. So to do that, we'll do control B and W. And this will basically give us the menu to choose from. Why don't we go to the node menu? And there you go. It will bring us to the node window. Finally, there is one more way of choosing the window and that is by searching for the name. So in this case, we'll do control B and F. And there you go at the status bar, you'll have a bar to kind of write down. Why don't we choose, say, for example, top and it will bring us to the top pane. 
All right, so that was a little bit about sessions and windows. I want to point out this article by SitePoint, which is really good about getting started with Tmux as well, especially to this diagram below here. This diagram very beautifully shows the relationship between a Tmux session, a window, and a pane. So basically a session can have multiple windows and each of the windows can have several panes. So do go ahead and give a read to this article. So let me first go back to the first window or rather index zero and let me just exit it. You can also stop this process in the current window and exit it as well. So guess what? We have exited Tmux and we notice that we no longer have the status bar right at the bottom. And if we try to list it with a Tmux LS, guess what? None are listed. Let's explore the next thing that is panes. So for this, we'll do Tmux new s. Let's similarly create a new session called monitor. And yep, we are inside Tmux with this status bar right at the bottom. Why don't we try to divide up the screen with several panes? Let's try to first divide it vertically. So to do this, we'll do control B and then percentage. And there you go. You will see this line coming up right in the center. So control B percentage will give us a vertical pane. If we want to further divide it horizontally. So to do that, we'll do control B and then double quotes. And this will divide the pane horizontally like this. So how do we kind of cycle through the panes? To do that, we'll do control B O. Notice here the green color is denoted as the active pane and so is the cursor right here. So let's try to do it again. Control B O and it comes to this pane. And once again, control B O, it returns to the pane right at the bottom. If you want to explore some predefined panes that are already by default there, you can simply do control B and then space bar. So notice this will evenly uh, have a pane that are vertically distributed. Let's do once again. And this will be horizontally distributed. Control B space bar. And this will basically give us a horizontal distribution with one pane that is main followed by two panes at the bottom. And once again, if we do space, this will basically give us a vertical arrangement with a main pane here and then two at the sides. So how do we close the current pane? So to do that, we'll do control B X and yes, we want to close it. Let's once again do control B X and yep, we have closed it. And finally, we can also exit it. And we are back in the command line without the Tmux. Now Tmux is more fun if we have more control over the configuration. So in order to kind of set up our own configuration, we first need to create the file. So usually the file resides in our home directory. So let's go ahead and create it. It is called .tmux.conf. Let me open this up in sublime text. So subl.tmux.conf. The very first thing I'll do is that notice that whenever we click a control B, it is a little bit hard to reach and people often kind of map it to something control A. So why don't we go ahead and do that? So to do this, we will simply do set dash G for the global flag. And then we will say prefix. We'll simply do C dash A. Next, we also need to unbind the previous default prefix. And in our case, it is control B that we have been using so far. And finally, we will also bind C dash A to kind of send it to other applications. So these are basically the three lines that we need to do to kind of remap the previous prefix control B to a much more friendlier prefix, which is control A. Why don't we try it out? So I am back in my desktop and let me simply do Tmux. And in this case, let me create a new window once again. Let me do control B and then C. Guess what? Nothing is happening. But if we do control A and then C, yup, a new window is created. Why don't we simply do ping google.com and let's create another window. Control A, C. And yep, a new window is created. And over here, we will run a top. So very similar, but now reaching control A is so much easier. 
Another useful setting is to kind of set the delay time between the prefix key and the command to slightly a uh, little bit longer. So to do that, we'll do set dash s and then we'll do escape dash time to simply one. Next, we can set the starting index of a window and a pane. Now notice here, whenever we start a new window, the first index starts at zero and then one, two, and so on. If you prefer, you can also start it at one. So why don't we set that? So we'll do set dash G for global and then base dash index to one. Now we can do something very similar for panes. The line number seven was for windows. Why don't we do it for pane as well? So for this, we will simply add on pane dash base dash index. So let me quit this and I have basically quit everything and let me get inside one more time. And notice here, the index of the new window is starting right at one. Now, whenever we change the source file or rather the configuration file .tmux.conf, we always have to kind of go ahead and source it. Why don't we make it easier and just to bind it to this key called control A, which is the prefix and simply R. So to do that, we can do bind R and let's do source dash file. And in this case, we have to write the location of the file name. And for us, it is tmux.conf. And let's simply end it. Next, it would be also nice to kind of have a little display to say that, hey, it is reloaded. So why don't we say reloaded config file? So this time, let me go ahead and exit it. And let me come back to tmux. Now notice if I do prefix and then R, it will immediately give a little short status at the bottom. Notice it once again. So prefix R and there you go, reloaded config file. Next, uh, let's uh, set some configuration for easier split of windows. So in this case, I'll do bind V and I'll simply say split dash window and let's split it horizontally. So instead of doing as previously a percentage or a double quote, we can simply do bind V. So let me go ahead and reload the config file because I've made some changes. So simply I need to do V and there you go. We are having several panes here. Very similarly, why don't we go ahead and create one for vertically splitting it? So for this, I'll simply do H and this will split it vertically. So let me go back to the command line and let me reload the config file. And this time, let me just simply do H. And there you go, it is splitting it horizontally. Let me go ahead and exit it so that there is only one window. So finally, inside the Tmux, why don't we go ahead and create a very simple pane arrangement. So the very first thing I'll do is split it vertically and then split it horizontally and then maybe split it vertically once again. So now that you have a little bit complicated configuration for panes, how do you kind of at one glance see that, hey, this is the active pane right here, whereas the rest are not. For this, we can also go ahead and make some changes in the colors of the borders for the pane. So let me go back to the Tmux configuration file. And in this case, we'll do set dash G for global. And let's do pane dash border dash FG. And let's put it as green. So this will basically be the dashed lines, which will be in green. And let's also do one for the background. So we will simply do BG. And in this case, we will simply do black. Why don't we try out how it looks? So we will simply load the config file and there you go. You will have green lines and black background, which kind of makes it a little bit obvious on which is the active one. So notice as I'm toggling through, the color basically changes, but not that obvious, isn't it? So I'm going to go back right here and add on the active border. So let me copy these two. And firstly, I'll have it as white as the line color and then yellow as the active color. And we also want it to be active. So let me just add on the word active right here. With that configuration, let me come back to the command line, reload the file once again. And there you see the active one will have a little bit of the yellow background, whereas the rest will have black. So as I cycle through it with 
prefix and then O, notice it is so much clearer which is the current one. Finally, let's do some configuration for the status bar on what information we want it to show. So firstly, let's do the status on the left, which is right here. Let's make it a little bit more friendly. So for this, we'll do set dash G and we'll say status left. For this, we will start with the word session and then we will basically append the sessions and the windows name. And for this, it will simply be session colon and then hash s to kind of denote they are all the sessions and the window name. Let me reload the file and notice how the status bar on the left kind of changes. And there you go, the word session is prefixed to the windows. Next, let's do some arrangement to the right hand side, which is right here. So for this, we'll do set dash G and then status dash right. Let's start off with the server name and then why don't we have some color? So for this, we will start with hash and then square brackets. Let's have it as white color and the background can be default. And inside here, we will have the time in a little bit different timing format. So notice here, it is having a 24 hour clock. So why don't we have it a little bit different? So we'll do percentage A, percentage L, colon, percentage M, colon, percentage S, then percentage P. And let's end it with the default. Why don't we see how it looks like? So I am back in the command line and let me reload the file. And there you go, you will see slight difference in the formatting. Why don't we go ahead and add in the date? So to do so, I will come right after the PM or AM and then I'll add in say percentage D for the date, space percentage B for the month. And I'll also have a little bit of space here. And let's come back and reload it. And there you go, you have the date as well as the time as well as the host name and followed by some configurations that we did on the left as well. The final thing that I like to do is to kind of have it justified as center. So notice here, all the window names are squashed to the left. If we do justify center, it will be evenly spaced out and there will be some spacing between the statuses. So I'll simply do justify and then center. Right, so I'll come back to the command line and then let's reload the file. And there you go, all the windows are right here. So let me come back to the command line without the Tmux. I've killed all the current sessions. And this time we will explore something called the Tmuxinator. So to install Tmuxinator, we will simply do gem install. Now I have already done so. And once this is inside your local machine, if you do Tmuxinator and then dash dash help, it will give you the very common commands that you can use. So basically tmuxinator will help us store the various panes and the windows configuration catered to each of our project. Isn't that really neat? And all we have to do is just fire up one command, say tmuxinator and then the project name, and it will fire up everything at one go. So let's see how to make that happen. So to create a new project, we will do tmuxinator and then we will do open and then the project name. In this case, why don't we do build dash podcast? And once you do that, it will basically open up this file, which is basically the project name and then YML, which is a YAML configuration file. So if you read through the default file here, it is pretty self-explanatory. So let's start with the very first line. This basically says, where is this file located? Very useful. Next, let's start with the root of the project file. So for me, it is coming under users, my username, sites, and then I have build-podcast, and then I have show notes. I think for me, it is also useful to kind of run a certain command before everything. As my build-podcast site runs in Jekyll, I do want to ensure that it is git checkout to the correct branch, and in this case, it is gh dash pages you of course can run any other thing for example let's say you want to start up a certain server or you want to check something 
Great, so let's go down. And this is where you can also load the Tmux option. If you have a special configuration for this project, you can load it up. But for me, I'll just use the default one. So I'll leave it as commented. Now from here onwards, this is where the fun begins. Now in our example right here that comes by default, it basically says that there are three windows. The first window has two panes and the first pane will basically load up Vim, the text editor, and the second one will load up guard. And the panes layout is basically main vertical. There is also the second and the third window, which will start up a rail server, will also kind of tail the development log. So for us, let us first give the name for the first window. Let's just call it Jekyll. For this simple project, we will not have second and third window, so I'm gonna delete it. So for the layout, I would very much want it to be, say, horizontal instead of vertical. As for the panes, I want three of them. The first one, I do want it to be empty, so I'll just leave it with a comment. The second one, I want the Jekyll server to be running. Now, do not worry if you do not know Jekyll. If you're running Rails or if you're running a Python project, a Node project, a PHP project, the concepts are very, very similar. So the next pane, I will run a server. So this can be either your cake PHP server, your Google app engine server, anything. So basically whatever you're typing in the command line, I'll just type it right here. And finally, in my third pane, I will simply run the build. All right, so with this simple setting, why don't we go ahead and try it out? So I'll come back to the command line. In this case, I'll just quit it with a control C. And all I need to do is T Maxinator and then the project name. And for us, as we built it before, it was simply build-podcast. Now notice what happens when I press enter. With just simply one click, I have the main horizontal layout here with three panes. The first one is empty as we denoted. The second one is running the Jekyll and the third one, which is basically running the grunt. Obviously it can't be seen. So why don't we go ahead and change it to say vertical. So main vertical. So let me exit it and let me run tmaxinator build podcast once again. And yep, the three pane configuration fires up at one go. The first one is empty. The second one is running the Jekyll server. And the third one is running the grunt. You can also have it a little bit uh, smaller in font size. And there you go, it is running in port 4000. So why don't we go ahead and visit it? And there you go, it is running right in my localhost port 4000 with just one simple command. And of course you can simply go ahead and uh, kind of toggle through all the panes with uh, the prefix and O command. One final thing, let's say in one of the scrolled off uh, panes, you do want to go up and kind of view the rest of them. Over here, there is uh, no simply easy way to do it. For example, I'm uh, viewing here, or if you go to another pane right here in the Jakal server, there is no simple way to kind of scroll up. So for this, you can simply do the prefix and then the open square bracket. And once you do that, notice I can simply go up. I can also kind of copy paste text here. And you can even scroll up to the portions that were away from the view. And you can also simply scroll down. All right, so let me just go ahead and exit everything and come back to the main command line. And yep, that was a little bit about Tmux, an introduction to it. I hope you found it really useful to kind of uh, put it into place for all your current projects, especially if you are kind of doing an SSH into a remote computer. All right, so a few links related to this that I found very useful. Should I invest learning Tmux for pair programming or solo code? Yep, you can use it in both cases. There is also a fantastic post by the Pivotal Labs engineers where they also teach you how you can do kind of remote pair programming using Tmux. So do check this out. There is of course the Reddit discussion on Tmux as well, loads of valuable links. Do check out the ThoughtBot Tmux crash course, which I found very helpful as well. And also some recent articles done in the month of August by NetTuts. And finally, there is also uh, by Cake Solutions. Alfredo went through a very nice, neat little screencast on Tmux. Do check it out as well. 
Now, I do want to point out that Tmux is kind of a recent software. There was a similar application called Screen by GNU. And it's definitely worth it to know the differences between Tmux and Screen. So do go ahead and check out this Stack Exchange answer on how Tmux and Screen differs. Finally, for the build link of the episode, it goes to openwebplatformdaily.org. The author, do follow him in Twitter. He basically collates a lot of interesting links related to web development, design, technology and he actually does this link every single day and he not only has it via rss you can also have it as email subscription or you can even do a little pull request on github so do follow open web platform daily digest and that's it for this episode on tmux episode number 52 for all the other episodes on Build Podcast, do visit build-podcast.com and subscribe via the sixth channel, which are RSS, iTunes, Vimeo, YouTube, GitHub, and Twitter. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.